future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lint. It's uh, James Mufasa King in the podcast today. How are you doing, uh, James? Jeez, I'm very good. Um, <laughs> that was a new intro. You are very yeah. innovative when it comes to intros. I like it. How are you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's always a step up from the uh, original knock knock joke here. We can only go up from here. So, yes, I'm doing uh, very well. Thank you, uh, James. It's, uh, it's Friday here in Malta, 16 degrees outside, and the sun is shining, and uh, life is good, uh, really. Um, we need to be running again together. Yes, that's that's, that's it. Uh, New York in 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 May. We have the uh, the running club set up for Central Park in the morning of the conference, and I'm assuming that you and me are going to lead those efforts. Interesting. The first time I ever went stateside was to New York, and it was to run the New York Marathon many, many, many years ago. That was my first yeah experience in New York and of being in the US, and it finishes in Central Park. It was absolutely it was amazing. Wow, that must be one of the Incredible nicest atmosphere. marathons in the world. Amazing atmosphere. You get to run through kind of all the boroughs um, sort of, of New York. And I said then to finish in Central Park was, yeah, it was a pretty good way sort of uh, to introduce myself to the US and to New York. But that was back yeah. in 2009, I think, something like that. Oh, I well. think. Yeah. A lot has changed oh, since then in the US, especially in our space. Yeah, yeah, that, that's for sure. Uh, the, a lot of things have changed several times. Back in 2009, there was still uh, the uh, the, uh, the afterglow of the poker boom in the in the United States uh, just before Black Friday when when it all came down, crashing down, and then obviously and now since Papa was repealed, now all eyes are on the uh, United States as well. And, and uh, I know that you are heading over to to United States uh, uh, here in a, in a in a little bit. What's yeah. uh, what's on what's on the agenda? We are doing a bit of a kind of close US roadshow um, with an incredibly fun start that um, friends of ours over at uh, Carousel, Max and Bet, are hosting a Super Bowl kind of party weekend that we will um, be popping into over in LA <laughs> alongside other meetings we have sort of uh, pre planned there. And then we're going to kind of go from LA over to Vegas. We've got some. Meetings in Vegas, as well as there's a, there's actually a fancy sports conference that we're going to pop into. Um, finish in New York and then back to the UK. So it's oh, going to be a really, really jam packed, like I think eight or nine days stateside. But I mean, personally, I haven't been in the US since I think it was 2019's G2E, whichever, like the last G2E before COVID came and kind of crushed everything. And yeah, I missed yeah. out on going to the US for um, SBC in November. So I'm really excited to get stateside and see everyone again. Um, it's, yeah, it's a fun place to be. And there's obviously a huge amount happening there. Hopefully there's yeah. things that will happen there with flows as well in the in the kind of uh, coming months this year. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so, the, the go to Super Bowl meets a couple of clients. Uh, you do what you have to do. You know what I mean? That's part of uh, this year, hardcore journey of being an entrepreneur and trying to get your feet off the ground, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I haven't got tickets to the Super Bowl. I imagine they are very much outside of uh, any price range for me at the moment. <laughs> um, but I think nonetheless, the atmosphere within uh, kind of L.A. will be pretty fun just to be in and around while Super Bowl is happening there. I've never Absolutely. experienced kind of um, US Super Bowl um, sort of environment. So yeah, yeah it, would be, it would be pretty cool, as well as most importantly, good for business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the most important thing. And, and uh, that is uh, why I wanted to do this podcast together today, uh, James, because, um, you know, we've uh, known each other since, uh, you know, funnily enough, since this podcast, since the first episode we did together uh, a year and a half ago when you were with uh, GIG. And um, since then, it's been really interesting to follow your journey. You are obviously the uh, the CEO of Flows, which is this uh, really new, exciting um 
uh, opportunity in the uh, in the uh, iGaming industry. And um, you have gone through this uh, period now of um, you know you 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 have capital in the organization to build an exciting product, uh, and um, you've gone out and speaking spoken to customers. Uh, and uh, you kind of taken the first steps uh, here, and now kind of start the next step in in your journey. And similar to our journey, which is uh, that uh, we are now kind of um, expanding our wings, let's say, and uh, we're gonna take this uh, little caterpillar and turn it into a, a butterfly or whatever you want to to call it. And and, and so we are in a quite similar uh, level here in our uh, entrepreneurship. And I w- I really was excited to do the podcast today just to discuss a little bit with you uh, how you. Uh, see this journey that you have ahead of yourself as a fairly young uh, entrepreneur. What does it take to raise capital in today's uh, environment? And, you know, raising capital is interesting today because um, money is so cheap that it's almost like you can turn the question on its head at this point, it feels like sometimes. And instead of yeah. um, having to pitch to investors, it's almost the opposite in this in today's environment. If you have a product uh, and, and if you have a team that uh, is competent, where it's the investors that have to pitch uh, why they should mm. be, uh, why they are the right investor for you. You know, so I thought that was a, a quite top, interesting topic today because we are in you know similar um, similar part of our journey. Yeah, well, I'm thinking you guys, to be fair, are a little bit further ahead. You've already sort of uh, delivered some very good, some very cool events, which we had the benefit of uh, obviously launching at in October in Malta and sort of uh, getting to showcase those for the first time. And I would say sort of as a kind of thank you back to you guys, it was a really good platform. Um, you know, we have been sort of very busy um, with demos and meetings, follow- sorry, following that. Uh, kind of launched at the end of October. So to others out there, um, sort of in similar situations, I definitely recommend it. But they say it's like, it's it's a really interesting journey, kind of going from guest concept of idea through to kind of uh, beta creations, um, then actually sort of putting it live, speaking to people, I don't think, at least up till this point that we're at now, because we're we're still in a very early stage, obviously, of, of kind of the life of flows that you ever lose the nervousness around a business. I'm sure you feel it as confident as you might be in sort of, you know, the product that you have and um, the kind of need for it in the space that you're you're sort of pushing it in. I think until you're like a big established Evo, perhaps you'll probably always remain sort of slightly kind of nervous as the journey progresses, but I think we're now at a really, we're in an exciting pace, I think. It feels yeah. exciting anyway. Like we're getting, a, you know, a lot of positive feedback. We're moving into ladder stages. We recently had kind of a, a contract sign announcement um, and hopefully kind of a lot more to come. But you say when it comes to the part of startups and investors and like fundraising, we're, we were super lucky. Um, you know, I know that you share a similar investor in Happy Hour, um, and obviously Mr. Robin Reed, who at an early stage, I think very much kind of believed in what we were trying to achieve with Flows and what we wanted to put to market, could see and understand sort of the reason that we were doing it. And therefore kind of through his full support and kind of the wider piece in, in Happy Hour, um, and that funds full support behind us uh, to get us off the ground. And I think, that's firstly an important bit for anyone um, kind of moving into the startup space, um, so to speak, is that even a, a, as kind of as you look for like early stage investors, you've got to be, I think, you know, do your due diligence on who is perhaps looking to uh, kind of support you. Um, you touched on it just now. It's very much a kind of two way thing because it seems at least that you can raise a lot of, um, at least a lot of interest in, in a business as you're starting up in the gaming space. There's a lot of cash, there's a lot of funds. Um, and therefore, you know, you need to make sure that actually you have someone or a group that shares a similar vision to you. There's also willing to kind of go the extra mile as and when needed. Things never go absolutely to plan. So with the best intention, you kind of think you're going to hit certain marks at certain points, but, things happen like as a startup you have to um 
very much plan for Todd's law. Anything that can be affected by it normally is. Um, and I think because of that, you know, you can't have sort of someone that is really, I guess, binary in their support of you. And we're really lucky that we um, said that we kind of have had from an early stage, Happy Hour and Robin believing and supporting in us. Um, and now or we will be over the coming months and some of you and I are sort of discussing off air as well. And I, I think kind of you've been through and we're starting to go through now is looking at that kind of next phase of, I guess, capital injection to really sort of supercharge us um, to the sort of next phase of flows. You know, we're a really nice point that the product is looking awesome. Um, we're now, you know, at a, at a starting stage of, of delivering in terms of getting clients through the door and contract signing. And, you know, very much, I think the proof of concept is now as a business, um, we're kind of taking the box and we could keep running as we are. And, you know, we've again, keep saying it, but have kind of really good support in that sense. But I think once you kind of, getting to the point of really proving the sort of concept that you wanted to put forward, there's that opportune time that you could, and sort of we are potentially looking at going, okay, but you know, what if we sort of supercharge this now? Now the foundation's there. Um, if we kind of don't just look at that sort of slow or organic growth, if we had a bit more of a sort of uh, injection with, you know, clever investment, and to say that in a sense of, you know, and again, we're in an early phase of scoping out as to whether we want to, whether we kind of feel it's the right thing for the business at the minute. But we're certainly, those that we're looking at is kind of clever investment for us in the sense of like, how can they help us as a business? Yeah. You know, you said it earlier that there seems to be a lot of cash flowing around. Um, and it's still two way, like, you know, it's not just going to be given to you. You still have to prove yourself as a business. You need a solid plan when approaching any type of investor, whether it's, you know, small personal investors through to the big VCs and everything in between. But I think you as a business need to be careful in looking at kind of who you speak to and what they can also offer, because it's one thing to kind of just be handed some cash and go on, okay, carry on. But with it being sort of slightly more abundant than perhaps in other industry or other times, you're in a position where you need to look and go, okay, well, you know, can they help us get into a certain market we're currently not in or we don't have connections with certain businesses and actually that's something they could bring to the table as a partner. I think investment, well, at least for me, investment needs to be looked at as a partnership now, not just a literal cash injection. It's like actually exactly. these, whoever it is you're speaking to, whoever it is that comes in, that needs to be a partner and someone that can help you. And I think, as I said, you seem to be further ahead and perhaps you can touch on it, but that's what I've seen from, you know, the raises that you guys have done is that very much the people that seem to be involved um, at that level with Next are very much partners. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and I think, James, uh, as well, when we went through our uh, fundraising uh, a year and a half ago, we were operating with, uh, before we raised the capital, we were operating with uh, very limited, uh, small budgets. Uh, and um, when we decided to raise capital, it was, of course, to take uh, our company and our products to the to the next level and so on. And, and what we did is um, we wrote we wrote a list of um, the the of thirty investors that we that we knew or had some contacts with or just knew who they were, and we ranked them one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on of uh, who we wanted to have in our organization, like who can contribute uh, to, to our success of the business. Uh, and then we basically went from the top of the list and we contacted the first three. So one, two, three. And we were very lucky and um, we, uh, we, all, we our dream uh, investors into, uh, into the organization um uh, right away like uh and, and so for us it was a dream scenario yeah. so to say because these uh, uh the three people or the three um uh, funds were able to uh to be very much a part of of the what we have built uh, since uh, we, we managed to sign off on that but then then you know on the other side of that coin like if you you know, we, we look at uh, investors who can contribute to the growth and who can help us. Uh, let's say we want to enter a new market, like you're saying, and so on. But at the same time, it's um, also really important to be aware of like what uh, 
what type of investor it is that we're talking to. Is it is it an angel investor? Is it um, is it a VC fund, for example? Uh, because they will have a very different perspective of what they want their uh, objects to achieve. Like a VC, for example, mm. they look at their portfolio and they say that they like a, like a true VC mm. will only invest in companies that have massive potential for growth uh, in a short space of time. Yeah, and um, so if you take capital from a from a from a fund like that, it means that they will put pressure on you to grow uh, much quicker yeah. than uh, what you might be comfortable with. Because from their point of view, they see it as like, well, 19 out of 20 of products will fail, but the 20th product will take us to the moon, essentially. And th that's like what the VC is. And, and so it's not easy sometimes as an entrepreneur to be under that environment because it's like, you know, this is your baby. Like, you don't necessarily want to grow that quick. Like, you want to... You want the growth to be organic yeah. and you want to play, you know, a little bit more safe and so on. But the, the investor doesn't really care because he has a diverse portfolio and he just wants to see like all or nothing. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you've gotten that feeling in yeah, your yeah. call so far or like if you have uh, met like different type of investors that have different uh, ways of. Um, of yeah, I think we've again, it's sort of early stages for us of kind of exploring this area. Um, and again, like you know, if 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 it makes sense for us to have sort of something to or, or a group to come in that can offer some sort of um, smart partnership with us, but there's certainly been a few calls where you know you say, well, potentially we could be looking at X, and they say, well, what if we give you three times that? How much more quickly can you yeah. uh, achieve uh, these numbers? And it's sort of okay, well, you know, we plan for this, but I suppose we could, you know, and it's it's already kind of pressure and you're only in the first couple of calls of, but as you say, it's, it's their sort of um, uh, want, I guess, to see what happens if they, if they double supercharge every company they yeah. inject into, it, it's like, right, quickly go, go, go. Okay. They fail, fail, fail. That one makes it, that handles the pressure and, you know, suddenly becomes the unicorn that they're looking for because that, you know, 100 X's or more of their sort of initial investment. Yeah, there is the, and the others drop it. There's so, the Pareto principle uh, here at, at play because the Pareto principle says that 80% uh, of the work, uh, sorry, 20% of the work uh, does 80% uh, of the job. It takes 20% of the time to do 80% uh -huh. of the work. And similarly, in an investment fund, it, it works under the same principle that usually what you see in a fund is that. Uh, 20% of the products, they uh, give the fund 80% of the revenue. So the only thing that the investors are, are looking for is those uh, basically uh, gemstones, uh, essentially, that they turn out. Or, or usually you see in a fund that like one product is funding the entire fund, you know, and the others are like a little bit lackluster yeah. when they go under. But it's like one product that is like carrying the entire fund. And, and um, that's usually yeah, what, yeah. what they are looking for. Yeah. One thing I found quite, I think is interesting, perhaps, you know, one and people should look at when they look at funds is what else is in the portfolio. Because, you know, I think it's quite interesting to see if there's a portfolio that can be complementary to what you do. Yeah. So, you know, especially like funds that are specific to an industry. So if you're looking at funds within the gaming space, if they have other businesses in there that they've invested in, that actually, you know, they could either use your business or they could, you know, support your business in being better or you to them, that type of situation. Um, and there are certainly funds out there, again, specific to industry that have quite a nice, um, you know, spread of businesses that touch probably on different areas of, of our ecosystem. And I think that's also quite an interesting piece and probably is for the fund as well, because they're thinking, well, you know, we can actually get all of our investments to start working a bit for each other and helping each other to be kind of better within our sort of fund ecosystem. Yeah. And I certainly find that as a kind of interesting kind of um, proposition as well to look at. As I said, it's, it's one of those things that I think it's kind of, it, to some extent, it's not about the money. I mean, it obviously is because we're talking about capital rating, but there's so much more to it. Yeah. And, you know, like, I think, you know, we've, we've said kind of currently got some um, solid 
support from from our backers and and you know they're happy to continue seeing us in the position of uh kind of running on our own two feet so it is about money to an extent because we're talking about fundraising but it's not in a sense that you know we're looking at something that could be a clever partnership basically to sort of further support our growth and i think that's that's a kind of nice way for people to try and look at it yeah, yeah exactly and, and you mentioned something interesting uh here james that uh some of the funds they're trying to build this like ecosystem that uh, feeds off each other so whenever you add uh, an, an investment into a um, a fund that is trying to build an ecosystem uh the entire ecosystem helps that um that product to become better and that yeah. product helps the other products to become better uh as well and, and that's exactly what um Uh, Tim Heath is doing, for example, with uh, Yolo Investments, which uh, uh, is uh, our lead investor. Is, is Yolo, and um, he gathered all the uh, all his investments for a conference back in uh, back in July in Estonia, which was a really cool uh, couple of days over there. And uh, we had a conference, and we said, you know, how can this ecosystem benefit more from each other, and like, uh, why is it important to to create this uh, ecosystem and one analogy we talked about there is um is from an from an old uh, election in sweden uh, like i don't know i think it was like 2002 or something where sweden was voting mm. whether they would join the euro uh and and um, and exit the swedish okay. krona and <clears throat> there was a there was a debate happening at that time between the left and the right of course and the the right side of the politicians they were very much poor to join Uh, the the EMU and and to to join the Europe, and so in the debate the uh, the leftists uh, they made the argument that you know we are on the sea and we would much rather be in our own boat controlling our own destiny. You know that was the argument uh, from uh, from to to like not join the the EMU, and the reply to that from the from from the the right side of politicians were well if the sea is storming. Do you want to be in your small boat, or do you want to be in a big boat? Right, <laughs> and it was like a mic drop, yeah, a mic yeah. drop moment that could be that could be heard. And we talked about that for the fund as well. Walk out, then. It's Down. like uh, you know, things are great. You know, economy is uh, doing fantastic. Uh, we are able to um, to to uh, to perform well and so on. But what, when the the climate uh, changes, you know. That's when uh, you want to be a part of this ecosystem that can really help and thrive from it, each other. And I just thought that was a, a, a quite cool way of looking at it as well, because uh, as an investee, you know, yeah. as a product from our, we start thinking about like how can we be relevant to this uh, ecosystem so that uh, uh, so that Yolo, the fund, uh, sees us as an important uh, asset in their fund, not just because we are uh, turning profit, yeah. but also that we are important. Uh, part that can help the rest of the ecosystem uh, and uh, I, I just thought that was a quite think, interesting uh, analogy well probably therein lies like a really fine balance doesn't it because you know on the flip side of it you you don't necessarily kind of want to be an expression to sort of say here like robin peter to pay paul you know money is just moving between people within one ecosystem because it's sort of like well you know standing alone it's not actually a sort of independent or profitable business it's just benefiting from you know things happening so i i agree with you and i, I think yeah there's a balance because you want to know that obviously you can do it on your own as well and as much as then on the flip side of it it's great that you can support each other within said ecosystems too but you want it to be supportive because there is genuine value not because company x is told to deal with company y because you know they just have yeah, to yeah exactly exactly and, and so uh, now when we um, uh, look so, forward uh, here james like uh, when when you start pitching to uh, investors like wh- what do you what do you do to what do you focus on to make your investment opportunity seem as interesting as possible to uh, potential investors like is there anything uh, any any tips or tricks that you can think of for like especially those who are considering to raise money for the first time um perhaps i can let them know sort of when we're further yeah, down yeah, yeah, of the line in that sort of uh, yes. in that bigger process i mean in terms of i guess how we're maybe sort of setting up or viewing it you know it's it's, it's a showcase of product and it's also 
a, a bit like kind of in, in our earlier stages, it's getting someone to understand why you've created said product, why you feel um, and justifying why you think there is sort of value to the market for this. Why the, why is there a need, you know, which is again, slightly, um, so it's slightly harder or, or kind of unique in our sense that, you know, you can't argue on it because it already exists because it doesn't, at least not in the sort of format that we sort of uh, built it and put it forward as. Um, so, you know, there's that kind of, um, I, I guess, element of, of selling that story to an investor or investment groups, if that's who you're looking to down the line. Um, forecasts, everyone loves a forecast. As hard as they may be to sort of uh, get right, I think, you know, it's why you need sort of months, if not longer, of being operational because you're able to make slightly more informed decisions based off kind of current patterns of pipelines, sort of timeframes of kind of contracts that have meant to be coming in, are coming in, how you've seen kind of revenue growth from clients that you have live. So all of those sort of things, I think, need to kind of play into it and build up as close as you can to sort of a, a pretty strong playbook to put forward. But yeah, as I said, as I said, you know, for us, we are not, we're, we're kind of, we're looking at it because we want to see what would happen if we brought another partner in ultimately, not because it's kind of um, necessity from, from kind of any other side to it. I just think uh, there are some really sort of exciting businesses that can help further add value to what sort of, you know, we're building here as a, uh, as a company. Absolutely. And I, to to add to that as well, I think um, it's quite interesting. Uh, when when we raised the capital for the first time, uh, we had a, a very different idea of what the investors wanted than what they actually were looking for. So uh, we put all the effort into into our pitch deck, and we were like, the pitch deck, like that is going to be what makes or breaks the entire deal, and. Um, uh, you know that is what uh, what is going to make or break us when we go to the investors. But as it turns out, it's actually uh, not at all uh, how our conversations happened. I remember talking to Tim Heath uh, of Yolo Group for the first time, and uh, he had kind of like seen the pitch deck, but not really. Like, uh, and uh, he just asked me, like, you know, who who, who are you, like, uh, as as a CEO, like, uh, what's you. Uh, what does make what makes you excited? Uh, what have you done in the past? Uh, and um, and he wanted to kind of get to know me as uh, as the as the kind of leader of the company. And what I learned through the process was that uh, the investors are looking much more on who you are as a person if they trust you, uh, mm. and if they trust you, they will trust that you will figure things out. Because in an early stage of a company, the pitch deck is often irrelevant after a year's time. It's, it, the company is so different uh, after a year's time that uh, uh, they just want to see that you can change and adapt to um, to the changing, the ever-changing landscape, so to say. And, and yeah, it's like, yeah, cool. If you have a good idea and uh, it makes sense and you can, you know, put uh, the numbers so that they yeah. make sense and it's not like some fantasy and whatever, that plays into this uh, perception that you kind of know what you are talking about. Um, but at the end of the day, the yeah, investors exactly. are invested in people and not uh, products. And I thought that was a, an, an interesting learning that we learned from the first um, from the first round of our uh, uh, round of raising capital. Yeah, I think it's very easy to put things down on paper, isn't it? And a lot of people, you know, for whatever it is they're doing, whether it's kind of within a business or they're fundraising or anything, can spend a long time writing decks. You know, decks for decks' sake and like you know, plans are planned and then they have a plan for the plan. And someone has a beautiful 20 page Canva or other sort of designed document, but you know, it means, it means nothing until yeah. kind of proofs in the pudding, right? Until you start executing and you look at the people that are there, it's like, yeah, you know, going on subject slightly, but it, it's like when you're looking at CVs, yeah. it's so hard to differentiate between people, you know, people have great CVs, amazing companies they work for, wonderful degrees from, you know, the top universities in the world, but 
you don't know if that person's you know studied every minute of every day given to them five years versus the person that's just super intelligent turned up one day hung over and also got the same first or a star you know like things written in that sense like it's nice to have and you know it's good to be able to put obviously thought to paper and people don't want to just be you know investing or hiring or whatever it is based off kind of a handshake and and a good chat with you they need to see that you've actually put thought into said process or whatever it is you're kind of going forwards with but you know that's what it needs to be it's sort of a benchmark versus like the gospel because yeah as said people can spend lots of money on creating a deck but a deck's not the product you know your pitch deck's not the event it's not the feel of the event when you go there you know, you see the atmosphere, you know, you, you can feel the atmosphere at, at next and see how people operate. Pitch deck doesn't tell you that, you know, you'll be there till late at night with your team sorting out an issue. Oh, exactly. You know? exactly. And, uh, uh, that they get, as you say, from, from kind of meeting with absolutely. you. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting this as well. Uh, um, uh, again, re- what, the, what do investors want to see in you and, and, uh, and so on? And, and they want to see, you know, that, I mean, from if you are an institutional investor, so you have probably met a lot of people in your life, and you've probably been in a lot of mm. hardcore working environments where you've seen people who fail and you see people succeed, and you kind of had this, you get this intuition of of uh, of um, what box you yeah. belong to when you meet people. And um, but if you scale back to the very first principles of uh, what makes a great entrepreneur, I, I just found it interesting because I. For fun, I just I have my own perception, and then I googled and and I, I googled basically how to be a great entrepreneur. And uh, if you listen to Google, the the seven key characteristics of an entrepreneur is one, don't take no for an answer; two, learn from the best; three, stay hungry and ambitious; and four, never stand still; evolve with the times; and then five, nurture long term business relationships. And number six is inspire those around you. And finally, number seven is trust your gut instinct, not just your spreadsheet. Like this, this is what like Google tells you. And for me, this these are these total um, uh, cheesy one-liners or whatever that uh, yeah. someone has written who doesn't really understand the mechanics of operating a company. I uh, like. If you really want to boil it down to the core principles, it's like everyone understands that you need to work hard. Like it's like we don't need to mention that. It's like it's, it's yeah, yeah. obvious. I mean, it, it's it's a lot of oh. work. You know, th- that's how it is to be a professional in general. You know, you work hard, <laughs> and and this is all these things that comes also, um, uh, that, that comes natural. They the, don't mention the team enough in that. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and that's the key. Like, that's the key for me. I the, the key principle of being a successful entrepreneur is, can you attract talent? That is the question that I want to know because talented people have many options, okay? Like if you're a talented professional, yeah. you have the fucking smurgos board uh, in front of you and you can choose which company uh, you want to work for. And what makes you able to attract those people to your company when they have another 50 different options on the table? That is what makes a successful entrepreneur. Because if you manage to to attract the right people to your company, it doesn't matter what else happens because you will figure things out uh, and uh, things will fall into place. You'll be able to pivot into a different area of your business if you have to because you have a talented team. Um, and so, so that is like the core principle. That's the thing. I think like, yeah, one should never call themselves like an entrepreneur because it's it's like so singular you know in a sense to say that when it's just completely not about kind of you i think if you want to use that tagline then i see it's like you know that the group of you that start the business you're all entrepreneurs regardless of who sort of sits under what job title um and you know you look at us like we're a small company there's there's only a handful kind of directly working in flow to say directly because you know we have sort of support groups that help us um, in other areas but um, those that are directly sort of um, working have been working on flows like they're all entrepreneurs you know like we're just we're all one team we all have a set function and nothing 
like we couldn't really sort of um you know operate without the other to some extent um and therefore you know just because you carry a job title it sort of means bollocks all if you've <laughs> found the language but just annoying when you know some people sort of position themselves like these kind of great leaders great entrepreneurs and yeah. it's like yeah but you're nothing without the team <laughs> like you know, and and that's definitely us. Like we are not that I sort of would ever position myself as yeah. that because, you know, I'm not like we have a team that flows and together we're delivering flows at the moment, and everyone's working just as hard as the next yeah, person. Exactly. To be honest, exactly. And, uh, you know, some days some work harder, some days others do. Yeah. Like, and that's the awesome part. Too. Yeah, exactly. Leader from the front, you know, as a, of course, you know, as a leader in the company. But but you you see this in sports teams, for example. I mean, it's quite it's quite a big thing uh, in the um, in the United States when you have uh, a very good coach in an NFL team, for example, and uh, that coach gets uh, poached to a different team. And if it's a very good coach, he'll be able to bring the the top talent with him because they just want to have him as their coach. That's uh, like the the uh, the most important thing for them as players so that they can continue to develop and so on and uh and and and, and that makes the picture i think more clear of like what is uh, what makes a good leader or an entrepreneur in this case is uh, do you have that ability uh, to to build a strong team and and then retain them uh and make them follow you uh whatever happens to your business or if you move to a different business and so on yeah i yeah i mean i think there's an element of it again we're doing like it, you know, becoming sort of singular as in unto me because, you know, over the last sort of uh, months of, of developing and delivering flows and everything from kind of design logos to the system itself. And now with our uh, kind of customer engagement team, our flows authors, all the support that we have, just everyone pays an equal part. So I think we also all kind of help pull each other along um so there's no sort of i think it's kind of standout singularity within the business in that yeah. respect um and also like you know everyone and the most important thing i at least for me when i kind of look at um you know the makeup of a, a team that we've got is that we all just massively believe in flow like in the product and you know we kind of said at least at this early stage where there's only a handful of people and as we kind of grow you know we're growing by like one or two each time it's not going up thousands that never really want to sell flows to someone that's coming in in a sense obviously you know someone's looking at a job spec in a business you know they need to know what it's about but you know i've been in situations in the past where you're like really having to push the product like really sell the business why it's the right move for that person and you know here's all the like ancillary benefits that you know, you can have the, probably every company offers now and whatever. Mm. And it's like, it feels a really hard push. And actually, to have the best sort of team players, you know, and, and best kind of business environment, it's that first time that you kind of meet and talk through what your product is, and like the vision for the, for the company and where you're going. And someone's like, I just want to be a part of that. You know, kind of like say no more, get it, want to be in. And I guess you know that keep that's happening to us because we're quite small right you know we're um not expanding at a rate of tens or hundreds of, of employees at the moment you know being very careful in just getting one or two like awesome people to come in each time that from day one just get it just believe it and like yeah this is this is exciting and kind of i want to be a part of this hopefully unicorn yeah. at some point but you know part of the growth of plays and I'd way rather have that person in my business because you can get five, six people that probably wouldn't do as much work as they do because they don't really believe it. You know, it's like they're for a paycheck, they're there for a, I don't know, benefit, gym membership, free lunch or whatever. Like we're, we're, we're an early phase company. We don't have huge canteens and all these fancy kind of bits. But I think anyone working with us now kind of really believes that you know we're gonna we're on a really cool journey we're going places and yeah they kind of understand one day we'll have all the wonderful kind of trappings of a big business if that's what if that's what the team want right it's nice that i'm sure as you've experienced being a bit more agile as a company that you know you can sort of really listen to the needs 
of the team because you're not trying to listen to hundreds or thousands of 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 people at this point. There's a handful and then you can kind of start shaping the business a bit around them because you value them so much. And that's what that's what you know we do and we have a place. Yeah. Um, and long may it continue. That's, that's awesome, James. Uh, and um, I, I'd also be interesting to know from your perspective now when you're racing um, your second round here. Is, uh, we talked about this, but I mean, we, we are both uh, young. But, I mean, we're not spring chickens, but I mean, we're fairly young at least. Uh, There's a lot more greys going <laughs> in here, I tell you. Uh, and so um, I would uh, think that this might be one of the first times in history where it's uh, so money is so cheap that uh, it's not longer about what pitch you need to deliver to the uh, investor if you are uh, a young and, and uh, ambitious entrepreneur. It's sometimes more what pitch the investor have to give to you because you know you have a lot of different options to 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 get investor investment. And as we talked about here in the beginning of the podcast. Um, uh, we value to have smart money on board with investors who can actually mm. contribute to your business and so on and so forth. And uh, I was actually asked this question uh, by, an, uh, by, by, by an investor the, um, the other week who asked, like, what, um, what can I as an investor uh, do to a product like you uh, for you to be more interested in having, uh, bringing on board us as an investor? Like, how can we help you to be relevant, essentially? And so, so I wanted to ask you that question as well, James. Like, now when you go out to investors, um, what can they to do to maximize their chances of like um, making you excited to have them on board? Yeah, I think you're right in, in kind of what you're saying that it, it at least feels like um, there is a lot of kind of investment going around and. You touched on earlier that a lot of companies, especially the sort of you know larger VC types, are basically spread betting with businesses. Like if we put you know a few whatever amounts into twenty companies, we're going to find a unicorn in there somewhere, and that's going to kind of cover the losses of the others. So it's it, it certainly is an interesting kind of position. Companies at sort of earlier phases that are showing potential of growth and doing quite well seem to be in when it comes to like these series a's or series b's um and it gives you sort of some um scope as you say to then actually be doing a lot of assessment of the people looking at you as well i think in one part a bit like you're touching on there, looking at sort of the individuals within the business you're doing the same because uh, i mean at least um for us and i think for others that sort of we've spoken to that have been through or go through similar things you know, they want an active partnership in this, not just a sort of silent, here's a signed check, you know, give us a call in a couple of years once you've got the return that we asked for. You want someone that's a bit more proactive, I think, or, or a group that's a bit more proactive in sort of advising on the business, like knowing that they've got some level of experience in or around the kind of space or product type that you are delivering, um, I think is important. And then... You know, we as sort of I mentioned earlier, when when looking as well, kind of how they can help some of that growth. There's, you know, as a small company, you're never going to be everywhere. And I think there's people that do have better reach than you will, or better relationships in certain markets or with certain businesses. That actually, when you look at it, you go, wow, if they can sort of help support us working in that market or with these people, that's going to really kind of supercharge this part of the business for us or, or sort of our kind of growth in that year. Um, and that becomes sort of quite a big factor. And I think you can actually test the water on that for both parties way before you kind of get into the realms of, of signing off investment. Um, because, you know, an investor could say, well, and I think this should be tested by, you know, startups, like as much as the investors looking at you wanting to see kind of a bit of your performance to date, your plans, your product roadmaps, your, probably looking at your um, kind of pipelines and things like that and your forecast, you know, you, you need to be able to question them and say, well, okay, you sort of mentioned about being able to help with this connection or this introduction or whatever it is. Like test the water on it, you know, ask for an introduction, therefore, to someone within that market or, you know, a bit of 
proof of concept from their point of view as well, uh, like for you from them. And that actually works for the investor as well, right? Because say you're looking at an investor because they're going to help get you into or put you in front of certain businesses. If they're willing to kind of do that with a business prior to going sort of to formalizing things with yourself, a, it shows you as, as a business, okay, they can help. Like they've got us in front of X great business. For them, it helps because that business that they obviously have a relationship with will see your product if, if that introduction is in way of, say, a demo and go back to them and say, wow, yeah, we had a demo with Flows or whoever it is. We can tell you as a potential buyer of that product, we are going to, or we think it's brilliant or whatever. So that kind of gives them that confidence as well. Yeah, we're backing, we're backing a solid horse as well as helping you as a business go, yep, they, 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 they can do what they say they can do in the way of supporting us um, as a partner, not just um, kind of an investor. And I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I think as well, especially when you raise uh, capital for the first time, it's, uh, it's scary, you know, to, to go into a meeting with uh, a professional investor who knows a lot more than you do about finances and numbers and we might put you in a spot where you can't answer certain questions and stuff like that uh so uh, it's it's easy to be uh, to be nervous and to be taken aback by the moment in that uh, in that space but i think investors uh, first of all they don't really um especially in early stage investment they don't really demand that you uh, should be some form of like accounting professional like that's not what they want to see in the in in, uh, in you anyway like that's okay like they can teach you you know along the way like if it's a good investor mm. he will be able to to teach you that uh, as you go on your journey how to uh, what the what finances what numbers you need to keep track of and so on and so forth um and so going into that meeting i think um what's important to remember is as well to set the amount so, and ask questions to the investor because usually it's like a job interview. Mm. When you go on a job interview, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you go into a job interview, yeah. and then the employer he asks a bunch of questions. Uh, how do you fit in here? How do you see yourself in this company? Blah blah blah. Uh, but if the employee, if the uh, if the prospect then ask a lot of questions back, like you know what what can I expect from you as an employer? Like how will you support my growth? Uh, and so on. Mm. And similar with with an investor, if you ask, if you set demands, like what well, what can you do for me? You know. Then all of a sudden, the yeah. power dynamics here uh, becomes interesting because uh, you you are not desperate uh, for for investment. All of a sudden, uh, it comes across as uh, you know you you are you have bigger ambitions and you are thinking further than just taking the capital. <laughs> and I think a lot of investors they see this yeah. as a as a good thing. It's just like many employers see uh, this as a good thing when you ask but questions back. I think as and I think as well, it goes back to this, to you starting your business and that very first sort of support that you get is making sure that they are a really solid sort of initial investor or supporter of the business that you're never in a position of being sort of coming across as desperate, being desperate. Said so like, you know, even with us, like we sort of rate it kind of, which we're growing now and moving forwards, we have a really nice kind of organic story that we can tell anyway. Mm regardless of stepping into the realms of investment. And the only reason we're sort of entertaining that route is because we believe there's some strong synergies out there that could, you know, supercharge a part of our growth that might take us a couple of years if we were to do it organically, but actually now we could do it at a faster rate. But there's no pressure to have to basically go down that route, which, you know, is, a, I guess, a very lucky situation. But I think you know, to, to an extent, you know, as they say, you sort of create your own luck. And we did that in a sense of making sure that we partnered with a really strong um, business and person in, in Robin and uh, business in happy hour from day one that, you know, you would never like uh, be in that situation where we wouldn't be supported if, if, um, if, if sort of the runway ran out. So that, I think then puts you in a nicer sort of position down the line. I think you've always also always got to be thinking of kind of the future in that respect. Yeah. Don't get sort of um, blinded by the lights of an initial sort of capital injection from day one of starting your business without kind of understanding, you know, how that looks further down the line mm -hmm. and what support that 
person, that group, whatever it is, is going is going to give you. Because if they understand and get the product, you know, if they see that what you believe in, like, is is solid, they support you no matter what, and that's great. And that's that's kind of also proof in the kind of idea that you you've kind of come up with, or, or the sort of uh, innovation that you're building on. Um, and then kind of you know fast forward to sort of the point that you just made that then when you're in the room with potential uh, investors or partners as as I would look at them in this situation you're it's 50-50 like you're asking them as much as they should be asking you you know you're not there desperate for anything you're saying look we're happy to continue down the road as we are which we are we continue going this is our growth plan if we continue as we are it's happy it's healthy and um you know we're going to do like all these sort of great things now there's a second tranche that we could take that we're entertaining looking at which is if we partner with a partner like yourselves then what does sort of you know said plan look like it's and and that's the kind of interesting conversations you can you can start having yeah yeah absolutely but again i I do i appreciate sort of unique to every business and it's unique to you know, the investors they have or if they raise capital themselves or whatever that situation situation is at the sort of start. Um, yeah. But it is, yeah, it's, it's like it's a super interesting time. I mean, I'm learning yeah. a shed ton yeah, yeah, of yeah. things. Thank you yeah, so it, much. It's, it's very Acronyms exciting. Acronyms as well in finance that I've never come across. Um, yeah, so it's like, oh, well, you could look at this type of model of, like, you know, another sp- uh, kind of acronym for a type of fundraise like, how many different types are there it's like <laughs> yeah. so many yeah um, exactly. you know i, I mean you, so. you come from the public uh, uh listed company uh before with gig it must be like how, how was the transition for you from going to from a publicly traded company with uh, all that comes with that and and and, and into uh, like a really fast moving uh startup i mean yeah. Back in the day, I started life in a in a sort of fast moving small startup in London. There was I think five of us, something like that. And we've kind of moved through different types of business at different stages. Like when I joined um, Alex over at iGaming, I can't think. How, I think maybe they've been around at that point five, six years, something like that. And, and you know, we're sort of a small to medium sized team at that point, and kind of. Like, you know, in my time there, we grew, we got acquired by Clarion back in, what, end of 2015 and sort of moved then kind of our smaller business into this sort of huge event behemoth business. Clarion then gets acquired by Blackstone. All right. It becomes this even bigger company that goes <laughs> and acquires every other global event business in whichever space they fancied. Um, so, you know, I went through a real journey kind of um, in, on that path. And then, as you say, kind of going over to a really kind of fun and innovative sort of tech business that was listed in Gaming Innovation Group um, and spending kind of some really enjoyable um, years there. And what was fun kind of when we look at it from a sort of business perspective that was kind of different for me there, I guess, to previous businesses was, um, you know, some of the pivots that we had made all were made while I was at gig, you know, divesting of, of the B2C business because it made absolute sense then to sort of concentrate and drive this part of the company. And all of it is just good learning, you know, for, um, especially sort of um, for myself as I was kind of, um, you know, going through these different roles and companies. I've been lucky that I've never, I guess, been within a really stagnant business, you know, one that you join you kind of just plateau your time there. The business just plateaus and continues, and then you leave and go on to something else. I think like every business I seem to have sort of been at has been through like some really exciting kind of growth and change. And I think when that happens, you then learn a lot because, you know, it makes you, you need to be really adaptable and open to change in that sense as well. Yeah. Yeah, good to have those experiences so, from like both. Yeah, and then and now and sort of... Well um, companies, so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, like now, kind of touching on sort of the topics that we're yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so touching on sort of topics that we're discussing now, um, you know, around investment and stuff. I think that's where it's quite good again when you're looking at 
you know, in, in a very early phase of investment, like we did sort of, um, you know, back in the day, or even at your series A, series B, series C, whichever series, there's loads of series apparently in fundraising, whichever one you're wanting to look at or whatever you want to call your fundraise, those sort of partners that are supporting that, like, you know, what knowledge can they bring in from their experience? Because that's really important. You know, you gain different angles from different people that are far more knowledgeable than me or you in certain areas that can benefit you greatly having that sort of uh, injection of intelligence for your business. Yeah. 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 I think Absolutely. it's just, yeah, it's a super fun yeah, stage, to be honest. It's like bloody hard work, but it's really fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, so James, uh, we're gonna start rounding off uh, here a little bit uh, uh, today, and I, I I just have a final question for you uh, here as well. Uh, what's the uh, what's the hardest part of uh, leading uh, a company that is uh, just about to take off, uh, so to say? It's uh, still having to prove itself and small but uh, exciting and fast moving. Like, what's the what's the most difficult part? Again, well, then, is, you know, it's not difficult just on one person. It's on all of us at this stage. And I think as a team, it's, I wouldn't say difficult. It's just more kind of, you know, how you sort of uh, overcome the challenge of there are a lot of plates spinning and it's kind of, okay, which areas do you focus on? And I think that's the important bit is like um, how you basically triage your kind of business workflow um in each part of our business so from the kind of you know tech team to the bits that i'm working on probably more on the kind of commercial and marketing side to the design side there's like a thousand things you want to do on everything right and it's like but what's important to the business and to the next phase of growth and that's kind of ensure that we kind of stay ahead of that part then we can kind of concentrate on the next pieces so we are very kind of again close as a small unit and have regular kind of catch-ups during the week to ensure that sort of we all agree that we are focusing on the right areas that are kind of best for sort of next step forward for a business because it's, it's it can be easy to get distracted by something maybe you've had a really exciting meeting and this new thing has kind of dropped in that you could go and do but is it kind of core to tomorrow's delivery or if not like you know that is exciting let's talk about it the next day let's concentrate on this other big thing that we want to be Kind of working on to deliver so it's just that i think management of workflow i guess um and you know we're in a lucky position to have a product that is so versatile in what it can do where we can go with it like integrations we can make to it that again we sort of need to stay focused on okay let's let's stick to these sort of core areas at the moment that are delivering like loads of value for um kind of customers we have the customers that are coming on board then let's kind of, you know, as we build out a bit, we can go do some more of these fun things. Mm -hmm. um, so I say it's like, it's weird because you wouldn't call things hard, even though there's a huge amount of work to everything we do. But because I said earlier, like everyone's just, you know, like so behind as in the team that we've got working for us, just so behind like the product, the, the business and flow, so excited like in the work that they're doing and what they are kind of continually delivering that I don't think anyone's ever sat there sort of been like really hard work. Just that was a long day, but at the end of it, you know, wow, I can really see some of the fruits of that. And that's why it's so cool that, you know, like we signed our first client a week ago, others in the pipeline signing and, you know, really starting to see some, some, you know, I guess, um, contractual fruits of, of all this hard work that the team have put in over the months. Um, and now it's that point where you're like, well, now it's going to get kind of quite exciting, especially as we've got the events coming up again now. Can't wait for them to start. I'm really disappointed that, you know, due to this virus, we've obviously had to push stuff back, um, ICE and uh, Next. Um, you know, I've seen um, Raz has moved some of his events, all of them great events, and would have loved to have kind of got our teeth into them in February, but... It's fine. We'll have a bit of a delay, but looking forward to those because that's, that's great. Like getting out and really showcasing. And, you know, I think for a company that's in its early phase, people tend to think that, Oh, you're, you know, at ICE you get lost because you've got all of these massive companies that, you know, book half the floor at Excel or whatever. Um, you know, and 
it, it's just not true because the flip side of that is that you know for a company that like ours is is kind of you know getting out there to market sort of getting some uh sort of advertorial face time to market getting banner out meeting people events are like the best place for us because you can meet so many people at, in in quite a short time and while right now we don't have a huge team of commercial people or marketing people or what any people we don't have a huge number of that it's harder for us you know just from our desk to obviously have there's only seven, seven kind of number of hours you can plan virtual meetings and demos through the day but then you get the events and as we experienced with our launch in october i gave me next and you know we look forward to a, um i guess ice being the first next physical event you get to meet loads of people in quite a short space of time you can really like showcase product um and there's like really exciting developments coming through with flows we're just about to push um kind of um, an updated version of of the interface um in about two weeks time that goes live and it you see it and it's like wow look his team have worked amazingly on it and it's it's just it's like seeing kind of this real like SaaS product. It, it does like, and the product before looked cool. Like the feedback we've had of, of all the demos and obviously people have been signing our signing is really good, but you know, it's, it's just, yeah. it's, it's so exciting. It's to happening. Kind of yes. such hard work kind of. Um, it's at yeah. that stage now where like yeah, you thought about it, you visualize it, you uh, have the company in your head and now mm. you see it uh, coming to life and you see how, uh, potential customers are interacting with it, and and um, it's like an idea that you uh, you vis- you visualize it into reality, and then from there it takes its own uh, yeah. journey, which is uh, which is just the most exciting part of being 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 an entrepreneur. It's uh, high highs, uh, low lows, but the, when the highs are high, they are very very good. Yeah. So so um, I think to 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 wrap up, it's a, it's a, it's definitely not for everyone because it's uh, psychologically very very demanding to. Uh, to do what we are trying to do, but um, if you uh, get to a place where it pays off, it's just the uh, the most rewarding and best feeling uh, in the world. I think. I agree, and you can't do it as an individual. Oh. I'll add to that. So again, it's what Google says is the best sort of things for being an entrepreneur, or whatever the list was you said earlier. Yes. They miss the key part, huh? Which is which is the team around, like yep. you know, just the team. Yeah, that's it. You are one. You're one team, one business. There's nothing else exactly. to it, right? In no place for individualism, especially at these kind of early phases of a business. Yeah, that's it. Um, and that's that's kind of key, key to any any. That's the takeaway. If anyone's kind of looking at starting something, or you know, are in the early phases, is you know, ensure that you are kind of that that great one team. Exactly. Can you not ego driven? Can you attract talent? Uh, that is the difference between uh, are you going to be a successful uh, company or not, more or less. If it does, at least the first principle, and then you work your way up from there. Uh, James, it's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, to have you on here, my friend. Uh, um, it's been great to, to, to get to know you through this podcast and outside of the podcast uh, as well. Um, you're going to be in uh, New York together. We're going to do that, uh, uh, that run together in Central Park. Uh, and then I'll give you next uh, happening in, in New York, 12th and 13th of May. Uh, super excited to to hear what progress you've made um, until then. But uh, before that, I'll see you at ICE uh, in a couple of months. Yes, I'll see you there. <laughs> super exciting. Thank you for today. I love having kind of our, yes. our, our probably two honest conversations. Ah, I love it. But hey, I love it. I love it. We need to be transparent and humble in the this. Is you know, I think the more people can be exactly the more people be transparent the better exactly we'll all benefit from this i agree i agree yeah love having these chats with you and thank you all right thank you so much james take care of yourself